Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lord and Arts channel. It's me, John, and we are here with the brand new show, Brain Scratch Case Cracked. Happy Monday, and if you're celebrating Labor Day, I hope you have a great one. It is another episode of Brain Scratch Case Cracked, and I am John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today or tomorrow or whenever you're seeing this. And this, you might have noticed, is a special retro episode of Case Cracked. We're running the old intro. No stock footage in this one, but another great story to share with you to celebrate Case Cracked's fourth birthday. The first episode of Case Cracked came out back in September 5th of 2016 and is called Hitchhiker's Revenge. You can check it out using a link in the description box below. We have since made over 150 different episodes. And I cannot celebrate this milestone without a huge thank you to my writer and co-producer on this series, Christy Arnhart. Thank you so much for all your help over the years, Christy. A lot of you know that I'm very moved by people stepping up to help others. And even though this isn't a traditional episode of Case Cracked, there's some interesting parallels, particularly with birthdays, that tie into this story. And I think it's really important to share this story with you. It does have a villain, a silent killer that no one knew was there attacking the most innocent and precious lives. Who can stop a killer? that no one can see. This story is called The Blood of a Hero. In February of 1999, Sydney was in the middle of a hot summer and a very pregnant Nicole Maddox Power was expecting her third baby. One afternoon, a girlfriend approached her with concern. She insisted that Nicole didn't look well. With a laugh, the mother actually agreed that she was not well. It was a horribly hot summer and to be 36 weeks pregnant and with two rambunctious boys to keep up with, the expectant mother was certainly exhausted. Her friend insisted that she still looked worse than she should. The woman's next question would stop Nicole in her tracks. She asked, when was the last time you felt the baby move? Her friend told Nicole it was time to go see the doctor. Unfortunately, it was already too late. Her baby girl, who would be named Montana May, no longer had a heartbeat. How did this happen? Her other two pregnancies had no complications. How could this one have gone so terribly wrong? She would constantly torture herself with the question, what did I do to cause this? Nicole, like so many other women around the world, lost her baby due to rhesus D, also known as hemolytic disease of the fetus, and newborn, or HDN. HDN is a blood disorder that occurs when there is an incompatibility between the blood of a pregnant woman and her fetus. When a woman becomes pregnant with a child that isn't compatible, the mother's body creates an antibody that destroys her unborn child's red blood cells. Women the world over have suffered from this condition with no form of treatment. Fetal death from HDN in Australia was a common problem that had no known treatment until the late 1960s when a breakthrough was finally made. Scientists discovered that injections made from the blood plasma of certain blood types called anti-D kept the fetus safe from the disease. Sadly, this blood type usually had to be taken from the very same women who had lost their babies to the disease these brave women would go on to form the core of the anti-D donor group that would protect over 2 million children in Australia so far, and they're still counting today. Almost without exception, when asked to contribute, the women said yes. This treatment couldn't save their children, but would help save other mothers from suffering the same fate and heartache. It was said that the more they had suffered themselves, the more they wanted to help other women. Anti-D donor women like this were soon joined by men. By administering booster shots of the affected blood type, a man's body would produce what is needed without the complications that women suffer. Even though in the early days these men risked viral infections from the booster shots, some of them chose to donate anyway. One such man was James Harrison. In 1951, at the age of 14, James had to undergo a difficult chest surgery where doctors removed one of his lungs in a procedure that took several hours and kept him hospitalized for three months. 
During that time, James required an infusion of 13 units of blood, almost two gallons. After he recovered, he was so moved by the fact that people had donated the blood that kept him alive, he decided that when he turned 18, he would start to donate too. And donate he did. Every two weeks, even though he was terrified of needles, young James would donate both blood and plasma. In the late 60s, scientists discovered that James had received that specific blood type in his transfusions, causing his system to make the anti-D antibodies. Very few people's systems produce these antibodies, and James's system was very strong. It naturally produced the antibodies in large amounts, earning him the nickname, the man with the golden arm. He was one of only about 50 people in Australia known to have the antibodies. Does this sound to anyone else like a superhero origin story, or is it just me? As time went by, there were fewer women to donate because with this treatment, they were carrying their babies successfully to term, leaving a pool of much fewer women to contribute. What a wonderful problem to have, but still a big problem. Over the course of his plasma and blood donating career, without fail, James donated for 60 years until he was forced to retire at the age of 81, having reached the cutoff for safe donations in Australia. During that time, he was even able to save the life of his second grandson. James's daughter was given the life-saving anti-D serum made from her father's own plasma. On May 11, 2018, after receiving numerous awards for his work, including the Medal of the Order of Australia, James donated for the last time at the Town Hall Blood Donor Center in Sydney. While there, he was able to meet many doctors and nurses who appreciated his work throughout the years. During his career, he had donated 1,173 times and saved the lives of more than 204 million Australian babies. For that, he is considered a national hero. No longer will women be subject to the death of their children by this disease or have to go through the anguish of helping other mothers accomplish what they could not. Now that James is retired, the Australian Red Cross Lifebloods program needs new volunteers to donate blood plasma for collecting anti-D. Gemma Falkenmeyer of the Australian Red Cross Blood Service and others hope people with similar antibodies in their blood will step up. She made this plea to the public. Quote, in Australia, up until about 1967, there were literally thousands of babies dying each year. Doctors didn't know why, and it was awful. Women were having numerous miscarriages, and babies were being born with brain damage. All we can do is hope there will be people out there generous enough to do it, and selflessly in the way he's done. James was just happy to give and set the bar for others. At his last donation, he said, I hope it's a record that somebody breaks because it will mean they are dedicated to the cause. Nicole has had three more daughters since losing Montana May thanks to anti-D treatments and she donates her plasma to make more anti-D every two weeks like clockwork. Case Cracked. We would like to thank DonateBlood.com Australia, Wikipedia, CNN, University of Rochester Medical Center, Live Science, The New York Times, NPR, and The Sydney Morning Herald. The Australian Red Cross blood service researchers are now working on what they call the James in a Jar Project, with the goal of synthetically creating a mixture of antibodies that matches what James's produces naturally. Today, although researchers are testing methods to make the antibody in a lab, donors who produce the antibody are still the only source for anti-D. Prenatal care programs have also implemented tests to try to learn when a pregnancy might be affected by HDN so actions can be taken. In honor of today's story, we've made another donation to one of my top charities, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And I'm just moved to share this story with you guys because of what a hero this man is. I mean, just think of all that donation that he's done, all those lives that he's affected and saved. Um, that's someone that I look up to in terms of the work that I'm trying to do here, just helping people in the ways that we do, making donations to the organiz organizations that we do. Um, it's just a wonderful story. And I know it's a little bit different for Case Cracked, but I think that, you know, a big focus for me personally for Case Cracked is looking for heroes. 
And I don't know how you can look at James's story and say that isn't the story of a hero. So I hope you guys appreciated that. Big thank you to PayPal supporters Ann Smith, Melissa Heinbach, Amanda Beard, Michael Park, and Penny Mantzorados, who actually remembered that it was Case Crack's birthday this month. And to many more years of Case Crack stories. Once again, thank you so much. Christy Arnhart. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit lordandarts.com where you can sign up for PayPal, sign up for Patreon, or buy merchandise. All of it helps keep me here with limited commercials. Together, we'll continue learning how to keep ourselves and our families safe. I'll see you again on Wednesday with a brand new episode of Searchlight right here on the Lord and Arts channel.